Should you buy the M2 MacBook Air in 2025? And is it still fast? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So I get asked this question from time to time. A lot of people ask me, is the M2 MacBook Air still a viable option in 2025? And since I have one sitting right here, I figured I'd make a video. Now in 2025, we're in some special times with Apple right now because we're seeing sales like we've never seen before. We've talked about this one right here, but we've seen this for a number of weeks now. This is the M4 MacBook Air, 16 gigs, 256, 799. This thing's been on sale for weeks now, weeks, and they're just trying to give it away for that price, all right? Crazy, crazy good deals. But we're talking about the M2 MacBook Air, and can you find some good deals on this? Well, if we look over at Best Buy right now, and we've talked about this before, you can get the M2 MacBook Air with the upgraded 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD, for only $699. That's $100 less. Now, before I get into the video, at those current costs right there, without doubt, 100% of the time, you should be buying the M4 MacBook Air over the M2 MacBook Air. If it's only a $100 price point difference there, you should definitely skip about 15 Starbucks coffees out there, put up the 100 bucks, and get the M4. So I just wanted to clear the air there. The M4 is right in that situation where the price is that close. I mean, if you go in here to nanoreview.net, we can take a look. Here's Geekbench 6 single core. We can see the M4 scores 46% faster than the M2 MacBook Air here, or the M2 chip, actually. You can see the scores in here. And then on multi-core, it's also 46% faster. That's kind of crazy. They're actually the same there. You can go ahead and see the scores here. So it's quite a bit faster than the M2 there. So obviously for that 100 bucks price difference, definitely go with the M4. But what I wanted to talk about in this video is let's say you go off to an auction. Let's say you're on eBay, like this one over here. And let's say this auction is going to close and you can kind of steal. Obviously, this is not the, the selling price, but let's say you can steal one over here. This is going to be obviously the, the uh, M2 MacBook Air here, 256 here, 16 gigs of RAM. You can steal for 485 bucks or somewhere around $500, not the 699 If you can get it for somewhere in that cost and you can buy it in 2025, should you? That's kind of what we want to answer in this video. Is it actually a good buy at a certain price and is it fast enough? compared to other modern computers. We're going to compare that right now. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to go ahead and show you the M2 Air versus a whole bunch of different modern computers you can buy at various price points. And we're going to see if this thing's fast enough, all right? That's number one. And then after, you know, all that's said and done, I'm going to go ahead and give you my final, you know, should you really buy this? And what's the exact price point you should be looking for on an M2 MacBook Air in 2025? What is that price point that says, hey, this is a good deal? And what is the price point that says you're crazy for buying it? And I'll tell you by the end of the video. Oh yeah, and since I actually do have the M2 MacBook Air here, the 15 inch, this has got a little bit upgraded SSD. This is the 512 gigabyte SSD, but my wife actually had the M2 with the 256. I think I'm a perfect person for kind of telling you my final thoughts on this because we still use the devices right now. We also have other devices on top of that, but we actually use those devices this day for a lot of different things. So I want to go ahead and update you by the end of the video. Now we're talking about the M2 chip, but a lot of people love to compare the M1 chip to some modern Macs now. Let's do that right now. So a lot of people are talking about Walmart. Right now you can pick up the M1 MacBook Air over here, 8 gigs only, 256, and they're selling it for what, $599 brand new. And this is actually right now in Walmart. They're still selling this brand new. So how does the M1 perform to the M2? Surely the M2 has to be better than the M1, right? Let's take a look over here. Again, we're over here on nanoreview.net. Let's take a quick peek. Okay, here we are in Geekbench 6 again, and here's the single core scores. We can see that the M2 is only 9% faster than the M1, but that's still something, right? And then we have the M2 over here, which is 15% faster in multi-core, so about 15% faster. But you can see it's not that far off from the M1, but obviously we're still getting faster speeds. So if a lot of people are still saying that the M1 is viable, they're using it on everyday tasks, you know, things that they do every single day, then obviously the M2 is going to be just that much faster, up to about 15%. And uh, overall, it's a fair chip. So we're going to find out how good it is, though, compared to some other Windows systems. Now, remember how Best Buy was selling the M2 MacBook Air for $699 brand new? I don't think you should be buying it for that, but hold on one second. Let's just say we were looking for a computer kind of in that range there, and we were on eBay or we were on Amazon. Take a look over here. So maybe we came across this one, the Microsoft Surface Laptop Go 3. This is from 2023, so it's the same age as the M2 MacBook Air. So we're kind of in the same range there. Obviously, you get a little bit smaller screen, only 8 gigs and 256, $648. So it's just a little bit cheaper. We got a 4.5, but what does this have? This has an i core or a core i5 on it, and the chip's actually a very specific chip, which we'll show you here in a second. So, if we were to get this laptop, you know, obviously, let's say we found this on Amazon, or we were going to compare it against an M2 MacBook Air right now, if we were going to buy them, what would be better? Let's take a look at the stats. 
All right, so right over here, Geekbench 6 again. Here's the actual CPU that was on that system that we were just showing you from, from Microsoft, that Surface. It was an i5-1235U. And we can see in here, here's the Apple M2 chip. So the Apple M2 is actually 24% faster in single core. And look at this, a whopping almost 60%, 59% faster in a multi-core right there. So obviously, you know, you could go with that, that computer that we just showed you back over here. Let me actually go back and find it um, right in here for 648 bucks, but you're not even coming close to the performance of that system, the M2 MacBook Air. You're not getting the same build quality. It's still a good build quality on the Microsoft Surface Go, but that's an older product and you would never want to buy that now, unlike some of the Macs you'd want to buy. Plus you're going to get Mac OS on the, you know, the M2. There's a lot of advantages there. The screen's going to be better. So overall, I would stay away from this one and you can see how it compares to that computer, but let's just keep moving with some other ones. Okay, for this next example, let's just say that we're looking for a normal business computer. And uh, let's say we went to Dell.com and we were looking for a computer in this kind of price range, right? That I just showed you for $699 at Best Buy for the M2 MacBook Air. So let's go over here. Here's a good price. Here's Dell. This is their brand new website right now in 2025. And I find a computer in here. It's kind of hard to see because this got jumbled, but $739 for this one over here. And let's just see what this has. We're going to scroll down here. It's got the i5-120U, 10 cores, up to 5 gigahertz. Looks great on paper, right? We can see it in here. And then what do we have here? We basically have 300 nits on the screen, 14 inch. I'm guessing the Mac's gonna have a better screen here, 256 gigs and only eight gigs of RAM. All that for 739 bucks. So you're thinking like, you can either get this or you can get an M2 MacBook Air. Well, let's put them together again, right now on the actual CPU. And what do you think's faster here? Okay, so here we are again. Here's Geekbench 6. Here's the Core Ultra 5125U, the one we just talked about. And we can see the M2 Apple right here. The Apple's still 23% faster here. And even on multi-core, look at this. The M2 chip is 11% faster than this one over here. This is the Core Ultra 5 again. So we can see the major differences here. So again, the M2 MacBook Air beats it again. And again, this is right from Dell's website for a computer they're selling right now for 739 bucks. So even at 699 bucks, that M2 MacBook Air would be a viable option, right? It's still a better computer than this with all you know, even the screen and the build quality and everything like that but you still wouldn't want to buy it because of the m4 obviously i'd rather just get that instead but i'm just showing you like compared to some of these modern systems the m2 is still a viable chip Okay, let's go a little bit faster on the Windows side over here. Let's just see, maybe, maybe a Snapdragon chip or something like that. So right over here on Amazon, here's the Microsoft Surface laptop. Now this is last year's model, Windows 11. We can see it's got 16 gigs, 256, but this is almost 900 bucks right now. So it's it's actually 10% off even. So it's usually $1,000 for this computer. This is gonna have fine build quality. You can see in here they use the Snapdragon X Plus, all right? But this is gonna be $200 more expensive than the Apple computer I showed you at Best Buy. And if you buy this, and we'll show you in a second, use somewhere like an Amazon or something like that or eBay, I'm sorry, you can get the M2 MacBook Air for way cheaper than even $699. But still, $899, you're saying, well, what can I get for this? Let's put them head to head here and see what's better. All right, Geekbench 6 again in here. Here's the Snapdragon X Plus, the chip that I just showed you here. And here's the M2. We can see that the actual M2 Air is 7% faster on single core. Now keep in mind that single core is gonna be better for your day-to-day -day tasks. Email, just like watching YouTube, writing, you know, browsing the web, stuff like that. It's gonna feel snappier. So here we're getting a 7% increase over the Snapdragon Plus. And this is a way more expensive computer than that M2 Air. Over here is the first time the Apple loses. Look at this, here's the M2 Air. 10,122. Now the Snapdragon Plus here has got a 31% increase. So it's a little bit faster or quite a bit faster on the, the you know, the multi-core and Geekbench 6. But the reason I want to kind of argue that this does not matter in this case is first of all, we got a faster single core and that's going to be most of what people do. But second of all, even with this system, we're talking Snapdragon X Plus on Windows. Right now, it's not like fully baked in. You still see a lot of problems with software running on them, on you know the Snapdragon chips and stuff. They're pretty good. I'm not saying that they're they're not really really close, but you can still get a lot more issues than you can on the Macs. Let's just be honest there. So I think, I mean, but even if you wanted to go to the way more expensive one, you're going to see you're going to still get some performance increases on the M2 even at this point, and you're going to lose a little bit on some of the other ones. But still, is it a viable chip? Absolutely. But let's just throw all that stuff out. So the average person out there might be just going to Amazon or they might be going to you know eBay or something and they're looking for just a basic home computer, right? They're looking for something that's gonna be, you know, that can do just, like I said, basic tasks for them. And typically what they're gonna find on there, if you take a look over here, you know, you're just gonna be looking for computers. And I just find a couple generic ones in here. Here's the Lenovo, it's the V12 laptop here, like 16 inch laptop, 16 gigs of RAM. That's pretty nice here. What does it have? It's got the Ryzen 5 5500U. Now you're gonna see that processor a lot. That's a very, very common processor so if you're in here and you're looking you're like hey look at this the review looks good 4.4 
It's 499 bucks, 500 bucks only. Brand new computer. The build quality seems pretty good, although it's still going to be plastic. You know, you typically see a ton of these computers. You walk into Best Buy or something, they're just all lined up. And you're going to see a typical cost like this. And you're going to see the Ryzen 5 5500U, 5, and you're going to think to yourself, that seems like a good chip. I know Ryzen's are good, you know, but how does it compare now to the M2? This is a this is what I'm more, you know, more people are going to, that don't really know too much about chips and stuff, are going to end up buying something like this, right? They're going to go here. They're going to see this cost. They're going to read the reviews, and they're just going to, you know, pull the trigger on this but should they have bought the m2 well let's compare this chip now which is the ryzen 5 5500u to the m2 all right so if you actually made that mistake there here's geekpen 6 you'll see right here here's the apple m2 and here's the ryzen 5 5500u the m2 chip on single core it's 70 percent faster than that chip i just showed you 70 percent faster on multi-core, just about 70%, 69% faster. Here's the Ryzen 5 55U, and here's the M2. So this is basically what I wanted to show you here. And, uh, you know, the moral of the story here is if you go out and you're looking for kind of a, just a general computer for your home or something right now, you probably can't do any better than the M2 MacBook Air. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, you can get the M3 chip or you can get the M4 chip, and that's going to be that much better yet. But since this video is all about the M2 chip and if you should actually buy one, depending on the right cost and stuff, I think I've proven it to you that, you know, if you're searching for other computers out there, it's going to be right in the middle there or even better than a lot of them. So there's no problem with the speed of the chip, hands down. Okay, before I give you my final thoughts on this and if you should actually pull the trigger here, just one thing, everyone's going to bring this up, so I wanted to bring it up. Well, when you went from the M1 to the M2 chips, you know, obviously those air systems, the actual SSD slowed down quite a bit when you went with the base level, right? So if you got only 256 gigs of RAM on the M2 MacBook Air, your SSD speeds are kind of almost cut in half. And let me just show you over here. This is from The Verge over here. I just want to give them credit. But they're just showing you some of the speed differences here. Here's the 512 gigabyte M2 MacBook Air with the one gig test. And here's the, you know, basically the same computer, but only 256. And you can see the SSD speeds over here. They went from about 2700 and 2800 over here, reads and writes and reads, all the way down to 2200 on the writes, and all the way down to 1433 on the reads. You can see the big drop off down here. See this? And uh, it gets slower than that when you're doing, you know, when you do stuff, stuff down here with a five gigabit test, it'll be around 1600 on the reads and writes. So you're going to get a slower SSD drive with the M2 than you are with the M3, even the M1, but if, with only 256 gigs of, of space. And also with the M4, obviously considerably, you know, a lot slower. But even at that, let me just put this in perspective for you. So... Long story short, my wife actually, she had the M2 base level model. Now I have the M2 sitting right here, MacBook Air, but I have 512 gigabyte SSD, but I use both of those systems all the time, all right? I could notice zero difference between them, except when I was doing very, very, very specific things, all right? So if you're downloading or you're moving a massive, massive files, you might see it's going to take a little bit longer. But if you don't have them side by side, you don't even notice it. Um, but for everything else, like just, just like I said, normal work, e email, browsing, stuff like that. I mean, realistically, we would watch, and when I did the test, it would take literally one-tenth of a second difference there for you know it to come up on mine with a little bit faster hard drive than on hers. But overall, it was almost impossible to tell. So if you don't have them sitting side by side, you're just not going to notice it and uh well you know 1600 megabytes per second it seems like you know in this day and age that's slow but realistically i mean you know do the math on it you can transfer what is a five gigabyte file in about three seconds it's not slow at all it's going to get the job done and it's just a quality drive overall so no complaints there but i just wanted to kind of just talk about that Okay, so now is the time where I should answer the question, should you be buying an M2 MacBook Air in 2025? And the answer actually is yes and no. And let me explain. Well, really, it all comes down to price. And price is super important, right? So here's my price point. What I like to do in these videos is I'm going to tell people that are looking for computers right now, what is the price point you want to pick this up? Now, if you can pick this up new, an M2 MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM, and 16 is the key. You want to get 16 gigs now in 2025. But if you can pick one up, either let's say Best Buy drops their cost, or you can go on eBay like the one I showed you over there, and you can find a really good deal in there of a computer that's either pristine or very, very close to new. The price point that you want to reach for is $549. So if you can pick up an M2 MacBook Air for $549, $149 or less, I think you pull the trigger on it. Obviously, there's enough separation between that and the M4 at $799 plus tax and everything like that. So I think it's the no-brainer at $549 or less. Now, here's the kicker, though. This is going to keep changing. As the M5s come out, maybe at the end of this year or early next year, within just a few months, the price that I'm going to recommend this at is going to keep going down. I think by the end of this year, I'm going to make this price, instead of $549, it's going to be more like $475, $475. So this is a 
little bit lower price point. Now, the chip is completely viable. You just saw it there, but it's the OS updates that you're worried about. So you have to get something back on that, all right? You're going to get a little bit slower computer. You're going to get two years less of OS updates. That's really important in this mix here as well. And when you combine both of those things, you need to get money off. And right now, I think from the 799, I think 549 is the cost it has to be with 16 gigs of RAM on the M2 Air, or just don't buy it. Otherwise, look for an M3 Air for maybe 100 bucks more or get the M4, save up some money for it. You're going to be a lot happier with that. And uh, in about three or four months, five months from now, the price you're going to be looking for is around 475 And that's going to be as much as you want to spend on the M2 MacBook Air. And one other note here, when we're talking about the M2 MacBook Air, you really don't want to even think about it if you're doing something that's going to be more extensive, all right? Like video editing, running um, local language models on your Mac, um, music production. Then you want to go with the M4 and get, get some RAM in there. Obviously, RAM is going to make a big difference in a lot of these type of things that you're doing sometimes even more than the CPU. So you want to beef up the RAM probably first over even the CPU. I mean, an M2 with 24 gigs might be as fast as an M4 with only 16 with certain tasks, all right? But that, but, but that said, the price isn't just <laughs> different enough. And if you're doing anything for work and stuff like that, where you're going to be making money back, just go with the M4 for sure, or the M5 coming out. Don't even worry about the M2. So I don't want people thinking I'm telling people to get the M2. All I'm telling people here is just the price point they should get it at. 549 or lower, and in about five, five months from now, 475 or lower. And again, if you can't find it, that means you shouldn't buy it. All right. That's my, um, that's kind of my stand at it. And I'm going to stick to that. Okay. I hope everyone's having a great week. We will talk to you in the next one. Peace.